The Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. I am Pastor Miguel, and it's great that you are here at this time. Today we have the celebration of World Communion Sunday. So we welcome also our people on Facebook or other platforms that they are watching our worship service. I uh, remind you to uh, uh, take your cups for communion. So if you haven't done it, please, that they are available for you. So let us praise our Lord and let us uh, have this new experience of fellowship. I invite you to stand up and worship together.
Let us now join our voices in the historic confession of our faith by saying, I believe in God, our Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As a community of faith, we are called to share our joys and concerns and pray for those who are in need. So at this time, I share with you the following. Prayers of healing for Marianne, home after gallbladder surgery. Prayers of healing for Jeff, who is at home after back surgery. Prayers of healing for Jer in Harrisburg Hospital. Prayers of healing for Steve in the hospital with an infection in his leg. Prayers of healing for Frank in rehab hospital. Darlene Lips' friend Betty, who has stage 4 cancer and lots of family turmoil. Paul Lips, the family of Frank Wayne, who passed away this week. So let us bow our heads and pray to the Lord. God of all, we come to you this morning with a humble heart, knowing that you are our God and you are inviting us, O oh Lord, to be in fellowship with you. 
So at this time, we pray for those names that had been mentioned. But we also pray, O oh Lord, for those who care for us. So we pray at this time for all doctors, nurses, and medical personnel who care for us in times of illness and disease. We pray, O oh Lord, for all first responders, police, fire, and e EMTs who put their lives at risk to keep us safe. In this time, a Lord of the pandemic, when students have to do hybrid studies, we pray for teachers who go the extra mile, often spending their own money to make sure their students have the things they need to succeed. We pray for those who care for the homeless, who are often struggling with mental health issues. We pray, O oh Lord, for missionaries who sacrifice their own comfort and security to ensure that others receive the mercy and compassion they so desperately need. But we also pray, O oh Lord, for the work of us as a church. So we pray for the body of Christ the church universal, as we strive to be the heart and hands of Christ to the world in need. And a prayer of blessing at this time on our tithes and gifts, that both the giver and the gift may be used to share God's love in all places and to all people. So at this time, O oh Lord, we join our voices in this beautiful prayer that you taught to your disciples by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear these words from the Gospel of Luke. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. My Aunt Edulia was one of those kind persons who work most of her day in the kitchen. She was always cooking good stuff and breakfast in the morning and every kid came and she was just uh, preparing everything and serving to everyone. And then after she finished with, the bre with breakfast, she started washing and doing the dishes and organizing everything as best as possible. And as soon as everything was organized, she started preparing lunch and cooking and peeling potatoes and peeling carrots and organizing everything. So in a way, it was kind of a 24-7 job. But after everybody was served and everybody was fed, she went and washed the dishes again, and she had the enough time to go and do the housekeeping thing. 
But I remember always seeing her so busy doing all the work at home. And even in the weekend, she was more or less the same. And when you ask her, hey, do you have time to go to church on Sunday morning? No, there was no time. Because she had to prepare lunch for those who went to church. So when they will come back, everything will be perfect and served on the table. But how much of her life was to be a pleaser? After many years, I asked myself, what type of life did she live in when she was pleasing and serving her people all the time? Was she wearing the mask of the pleaser without even noticing? She did not have the time for herself, just for others. Jess was constant, but her no barely came out of her mouth. The Brazilian writer Paulo Coelho wrote the following, and he says, when you say yes to others, make sure you aren't saying no to yourself. Pleasers are very friendly, careful, and concerned about generating well-being in those around them. But behind the mask of the pleaser, they are people with a definition of themselves. Their self-esteem is highly conditioned by the need of appreciation and fear of rejection. There is more concern for the harm they may cause than for the discomfort they may feel by not limiting the attitudes. Of others. This need for appreciation versus the fear of, re of rejection can lead them to attitudes of subordination and submission to the needs of others with their own desires and interests taking second place. They often try to avoid discrepancy of opinions and they delegate essential decisions to others. Due to the lack of assertiveness. When it comes to saying no. Or setting limits to others. So it is frequent to see that. And some time ago I... Read a book called Boundaries, written by Henry Cloud and John Townsend. I don't know if you have read that book. And in their book, they talk about the problems that people have with boundaries from the Christian perspective. And two of the types of boundaries they mention are functional boundaries, which refer to the ability to complete a task, and relational boundaries that refer to the ability to engage another person in an honest manner. So some people can complete tasks quite well. It means they keep their functional boundaries, but they cannot confront a friend about a bad habit, which is relational boundaries. Others have the ability to engage others in a healthy relationship, but they cannot seem to complete their daily duties properly. So now, let us use this idea that these authors are offering about the functional and relational boundaries to speak up a little bit about our t Bible text this morning. So we have, we remember that we are using the idea of uh, recognizing the characters and the plot like a movie. So we have here the characters are Jesus, Martha, and Mary. And Mary and Martha are extraordinary women in, of faith. They were sisters, and if you remember, they have a brother whose name was Lazarus, who was resurrected from death, and they lived in a small village called Bethany. Bethany was very close to Jerusalem. And the Bible says that Jesus really loved 
Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So Martha and Mary appeared in the New Testament in two occasions. In a meal, which is what we're talking today. And in this moment of sadness when their brother passed away. So according to the text... We don't know if this event happened in Bethany, but we assume that it happened there because we know that they lived there. And we don't know if Jesus was alone or if he had the company of other disciples because it doesn't say in the text. But we have to remember that Jesus, most of the time, he was not by himself. He was with his disciples visiting towns and villages. So therefore, we'll be only, we will only look at this story from the point of view of the writer. Or from the paintings and drawings that see, that shows us this is seen. Mary seated at Jesus' feet, listening to what he said. A Martha on the other side of the picture doing some housekeeping things. Why do I ask you to pay attention to these details? Because it is possible that Martha's urgency to have something ready to eat, which we also assume because it doesn't say in the text, may have been one of the reasons for her behavior to place Jesus and the disciples who, to please Jesus and the disciples who were there. But hey, there are merit speculations which help us to see the Bible text in a different way and help us to see the context and see the pleaser in a wide, wider angle. So Mary sits down to listen to Jesus and Martha does housework and she gets upset with her sister because she doesn't help her at all. But look at her behavior, look at Martha's behavior. She doesn't complain directly to Martha. She goes and complains to Jesus and tells him about what is annoying for her with her sister. And the only we know that Jesus tells her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one is needed. Mary! Has chosen what is better, and I will not take away take it away from her. So now let's go back to our idea of the uh, functional boundaries and the relational boundaries, because the functional boundaries refer to Martha that we carry within us, and the relational boundaries would be Mary. So Martha was an excellent hostess. She probably cleaned the house very well, organized all preparations for the visit. Of course, not all the time you have a guest like Jesus who comes to your home. I'm sure that if that happens to you, you will be cleaning like crazy. <laughs> so she's wearing the mask of the pleaser. The only thing that for her matters is not a moment with Jesus but to serve Jesus. So what type of service? Why Jesus referred the other service and not hers. When Martha complained about Mary not helping her, Jesus said, Mary has chosen what is better. So Je Jesus didn't want to tell Martha that what she was doing was wrong. Rather, it was not the right activity in the right moment, in the right circumstances. So many people have excellent functional boundaries, but their relation and wants are impoverished. They are very competent in what they do, but it is difficult for them to face up to something that bothers them. While others are experts in saying things frankly, to others and expressing their criticism openly, but at the moment of the action, they do not have the same dynamic. So you see, when Jesus comes to visit Martha, 
spent all, Martha spent all her time preparing the meal, offering hospitality, but she forgot the other part. And Jesus says she missed the chance to simply sit at his feet. And now I like the phrase that, sitting at the feet of Jesus, which implies more than a physical location. It also is a description of a spiritual condition. So let me give you an example. Uh, uh, the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 20, in Acts chapter 22, verse 3, says, according to the King James Version, I am verily a man which am a Jew born in Tarsus, a city of Sicilia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel. And taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers. And was jealous toward God as ye all are this day. Sitting at the feet of somebody. When you sit at the feet of a master. You signify that you are ready to receive his teaching. His blessings. His knowledge. His wisdom. So disciples were often Sitting at the feet of Jesus, learning by wearing the mask of the pleaser was not a chance to do that. Martha was so into that. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. You see? Wearing the mask of the pleaser, it is easier than to build up resentment toward others who won't work as hard as we do make others happy. And Jesus, noting the irritation of her boy, says, Martha, you wear many masks and are worried and upset by many things, but Mary has taken off the mask of the world and chosen to sit at my feet. She has chosen the better mask. And that cannot be removed from her. So brothers and sisters. Where does faith meet life? Ed Sheeran is a John uh, English singer and songwriter uh, and musician. And he said one time when people talked about his music and his success as a singer, he said, I can tell you the key to success, but the key to failure is trying to please everyone. So friends, there is nothing wrong with trying to please somebody for something unique. Still, it is dangerous for you and me to be always pleasing people because you get their approval. It will affect you in your relationship with others. Still, this action of always wearing the mask of the pleaser would cause severe damage in yourself. You will live to please others and learn, learning of learning to know you and recognize that to fail in life is not wrong. It is part of our journey. How many of us wear the mask of the pleaser and lose the blessing of something much better? Start thinking and reflecting on the times that you have done it. Have you ended most of these sermons I have ended most of the sermon saying, take your mask off and be real, be authentic before others and before God. By doing so, we are presenting to God as we are with imperfections and wrongdoings. It doesn't mean that we cannot continue being hospitable. And it doesn't mean that we cannot care for others. Friends, there is a big difference between being a pleaser who says yes to everything that can damage our lives as a whole. Instead of recognizing that sometimes a no can be healthy of, for everything. So our most frequent fears when we say no are that others will be offended. 
or that our no can cause conflict and fights and arguments. Perhaps that is the relation will be cut off or lose the effective bond. However, it is wise and truthful to say no when things are pressing us and causing us damage. We need to learn to choose the right part. Unfortunately, when we choose to always wear the mask of the pleaser, we miss the chance to fellowship, interact, enter in a relationship with one another. It is just like my aunt, who never had time to sit at the feet of Jesus because her daily duties and worries were devoted to pleasing others. So let, so don't let that happen in our lives. Let us recognize our limitations and be honest and faithful with God so the Lord doesn't need to tell us, my child, my child, you are worried and distracted by many things, but only one thing is needed. Others have chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from them. Let us meditate in these words as we recognize the many times that we have worn the mask of the pleaser. As we prepare for sharing in the sacrament of Holy Communion, please join me in our unison prayer of confession. Patient Lord, we schedule our lives down to the very second. We crowd in as much activity as we can, and then wonder why we are so stressed out and tired. We are afraid to miss out on anything. And when it comes time to be with us, we spend our time worrying about details rather than longing for the visit. Forgive us when we get so caught up in the details and miss the opportunity to sit at your feet, learning, listening, growing in your faith. Help us to place ourselves in your care. Slow down just a bit so that we can see the wonders you have placed before us and truly enjoy and share the blessings you have given to us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. On the seventh day of creation, God rested, creating a Sabbath, a time set apart to, for rest, to learn, to listen, to be quiet and at peace. Let Sabbath Take root in our heart and in our life. Be at peace in God's love for you. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. As United Methodists, we celebrate an open table. Well, all, where all are welcome and encouraged to share in this holy meal. Let us offer to the Father with the bread and with the wine all our joys and all our sorrows, all our cares, O oh Lord, are thine. Dear friend,
ofrecemos, Padre nuestro, con el vino y con el pan, nuestras penas y alegrías, el trabajo y nuestro afán. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations, and today his family in all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself, he took bread, gave himself for us, took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to his disciples and said, Drink from these, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world, and strengthen in all the nations and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ come in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. You have received the cup and you have also received um, the waffle inside. So I invite you at this time to take the first, first film and take a piece of bread. This is the body of Christ. Now take the second film. This is the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Eternal God, 
We give you thanks for your holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Holy Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God has invited us to be united with so many people around the world in this World Communion Sunday. So now let us receive the benediction. God of the world, thank you for inviting us one more time to be united with so many Christians around the world. No matter what is their language, their origin, their geographical area, you are there among us through the wine and through the bread. So now as your church here at Charlton, we are committed, O oh Lord, to continue serving you, to take the mask of the pleaser and do things for you and pay attention to the time of fellowship as well. So now, brothers and sisters in Christ, go with God's blessing. The one that comes from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
you mind spraying down the fuse? Sure.